autour de, des années 2000, euh, dans un couple de lucidité, je suis allée me faire faire un ensemble d'examens, mammographie, frottis euh, et, et tout l'ensemble des choses. Ce que après, pendant quelques mois, j'ai regretté, parce que quand je suis sortie de là, tout le monde avait l'air catastrophé parce qu'effectivement, sur la mammographie, on avait noté qu'il y avait une chose qui pouvait ressembler à une tumeur. C'était début janvier, on m'a opéré et euh, quand je me suis réveillée dans ma chambre, le chirurgien qui m'avait opéré a fait la première erreur, il est venu me dire que tout s'était très bien passé et que je pouvais dormir sur mes deux oreilles et que tout allait bien, mais quand même qu'il fallait que je passe dans 15 jours le voir pour avoir le résultat des analyses. 15 jours après, je suis donc allée voir ce monsieur convaincu que tout allait bien. Et euh, deuxième erreur, euh, dans la salle d'attente, il me regarde et il me dit « Ma pauvre dame, j'ai pas de bonnes nouvelles pour vous. » Et il a commencé un monologue. « Je suis désolé, je vais faire ceci, je vais faire cela, je fais de la chimio, je fais de la radiothérapie, je réopère, badabi, badaba. » Donc il faisait tout « je, 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 je ». Donc à un moment, je me suis dit, c'est génial s'il le fait sur lui et s'il ne le fait pas sur moi, ça va très très bien se passer. Et comme j'étais quand même choquée, et quand je suis choquée, je peux devenir assez vite agressive, euh, je l'ai envoyé balader en lui disant tout simplement, eh ben, je ne ferai rien de tout ça et je veux mon dossier médical et je m'en vais de cet hôpital de point de suspension. J'ai commencé à faire le goémio des cancérologues de Paris. C'est-à-dire que j'en ai vu un, j'en ai vu deux, j'en ai vu trois, j'en ai vu quatre et j'en ai vu cinq. À chaque fois, j'avais un petit carnet et à chaque fois, je faisais une croix. Qui voulait réopérer, qui voulait faire de la radiothérapie, qui voulait faire ce que j'appelais bretelles et ceintures, c'est-à-dire réopération euh, euh, chimio et radiothérapie. Et je me suis rendu compte d'une chose, et là, ça a été ma, ma première grande surprise, c'est que moi, je suis quelqu'un profondément naïf et je fais confiance. Donc, pour moi, la médecine était une science exacte. Quand je me suis retrouvée face à des gens qui ne disaient pas la même chose, j'ai eu cette chose incroyable de me rendre compte que ce n'était pas exact. Et comme pour moi, c'était le corps, c'est une voiture, je vais chez le mécanicien, il me change le Delco, il me remet la batterie et tout va bien, c'était pas du tout, du tout comme ça, l'histoire. Donc, euh, j'étais pas fière, parce que je savais pas trop ce qu'il fallait que je fasse et pas. Et je regardais ce bon sang de carnet avec ses croix. Et je me disais, mais qu'est-ce que je peux bien faire avec ça Le dernier que j'ai vu, le professeur Turtz, avait l'air d'être un peu plus humain. J'étais dans mon cabinet de consultation à la ville juive et euh, je reçois une nouvelle patiente qui euh, se présente, qui est manifestement à la fois vive, intelligente, caustique, euh, mais, mais clairement pas à l'aise et agressive. Agressive qui est clairement et, euh, ce qu'on appelle une patiente difficile. Quelques jours auparavant, euh, des amis à moi m'avaient invité à partir en Inde. Cocotier, plage, euh, tranquille. Et vraiment, quand je suis montée dans l'avion, j'étais soulagée. J'étais vraiment... Je savais que pendant 15 jours, on ne parlerait plus de ce maudit cancer. Hein, et mes amis savaient que personne n'avait le droit d'en parler et qu'il ne fallait pas prononcer ce mot. Je suis dans l'avion, je suis assise à côté d'une dame gentille qui elle aussi, elle est au même endroit que nous, euh, euh, et on commence à papoter dans l'avion. Ah, vous n'êtes jamais allé en Inde, vous allez voir, c'est merveilleux, euh, c'est un pays magnifique. Et elle, elle, vraiment, elle me raconte, et je lui dis, vous allez, mais vous connaissez bien. Et elle me dit, oui, je soigne ma leucémie. Et là, il y a eu un truc 
qui est toujours là d'ailleurs, qui était « Ouf, ça y est, je sais où il faut aller ». C'était très très clair. Quand je suis rentrée à Paris, j'ai mis 48 heures. J'avais juste 48 heures avant de retourner à Villejuif. Je suis retournée à Villejuif. Et euh, le professeur Turtz me dit « Qu'est-ce que vous avez décidé ?» Et je lui dis « Écoutez, voilà, j'ai décidé que j'ai rencontré en Inde euh, la médecine ayurvédique. Je pense que je vais suivre euh, ce filon. Mais euh, pour ne pas prendre de risques, je veux bien faire de la radiothérapie. J'entends plus parler pendant plusieurs années. Et euh, un jour, je reçois un coup de téléphone. Je reçois un coup de téléphone par le biais de multiples secrétariats. Elle m'a directement au téléphone. Et elle est chaleureuse, elle est expansive. Elle me dit, voilà, je suis Nella Banff. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de moi Bien sûr, je me souviens de vous. Vous êtes la, la, la pire patiente que j'ai jamais eue, la plus indisciplinée, la plus... Oui, je me souviens très bien. Et... Euh... Euh, oui, oui. On se revoit et on a une conversation très étrange où elle m'explique que euh, je l'ai guéri par ma parole et par ma compréhension et en ne faisant rien du tout, mais qu'elle a été aussi guérie par euh, le fait qu'elle allait en Inde, qu'elle avait rencontré euh, des personnes extraordinaires qui pratiquaient des traitements ayurvédiques et qu'elle là, elle avait été comprise, qu'elle avait eu des médicaments qui, que son corps acceptait, même que son corps demandait et réclamait. Il me dit, oui, euh, il faut quand même que vous m'expliquiez ce qu'ils vous ont fait là-bas. Je dis, bah, très volontiers. Et il me provoque en me disant, non, vous n'allez pas m'expliquer, vous allez m'emmener en Inde. Pour comprendre un peu quel traitement, ce qui s'était passé. Je lui dis, absolument d'accord. Je serais ravie de vous faire rencontrer ces gens exceptionnels qui le sont tout autant que vous. Et donc, quelques années plus tard, nous avons réussi à organiser ce voyage en Inde. Hello. Namaste. Mm. Mm. How are you? Mm, fine. I'm so pleased. May I introduce you? Sure, sure. French sure. doctor. Yeah. Like to meet you. I'm nice to meet you. My Indian <laughs> angel. <laughs> It's okay if I Thank call you, you like Thank that? Thank you. My Indian angel. She, she's not calling me her French angel at all. <laughs> no, it's not but okay. I, 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 I think I, later she will do. You, she, you <laughs> promise? Yeah. Oh, listen, I did a long trip to see you. And, and a long I, I trip, been, I, I a real long trip for you. in time yeah. and in spirit. So yeah, okay. we will see mm -hmm. what it will give. Okay, let, let us see how it goes. I would, Thank you very I much. Would, I would introduce you to my friend, mm -hmm. Sujetas. He's my brother monk. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yes. Hello. 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 Nice Thomas. to meet you. Yes. Thomas. Nice to meet you. Thomas has a lot of questions for you because he wants to understand what we have done when I come and I meet you. According to our outlook on life, cancer is a different disease. That means the cancer has to be approached um, in a different way. Because usually you think that there is a cause for a disease and you, you treat the disease. But when you treat cancer, you have to address the human being as distinctly three individuals. The physical individual who is in the body and the mentally, the mental makeup of the person and also what that person is inside the body and mind. We can call it spirit or the soul. So cancers originate from the soul and it finally manifests in the body. So any remedy that we suggest for cancer should start from the soul. And also through food and medicine. For example, in Nala's case, it was Ayurveda. Ayurveda treats the person, not the disease. 
That is, what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda, that means Veda means... Ayurveda? Ayurveda. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, Actually, Ayurveda. the word itself is very fascinating because Ayur, that means know, life. Ayur is a word in friendly. Ayur, that means life. Veda is knowledge. Mm. Or science. It's, Veda, it's a science of life. Science Ayurveda of life. is science of life. Science of life. So, we have different basic energies that, is, that makes our body and mind function. So, there is a basic imbalance in our body and mind. It man, this imbalance manifests as a disease. That is how we see it. What I know is the conservations in yeah. France even cured or not cured, are very unhappy in any case, in any yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. So I think that uh, we are, what would be interesting is to see what is good in what you are doing, good in what we are doing, and try to make an interesting synthesis. So, yeah, I do talk, talk. Sure. Yeah, I do talk, talk. Talk, talk. I think I decide to live. Yeah, I know. And, exactly, exactly. And he helped me to understand what was life. For me, the only lesson is was, was to understand if you want to live, what do you want to do with your life? Exactly. It's the only lesson. It yeah. takes two or three years, yeah. yes, because I was a little bit... And I am a monk, and I have been a monk more than 22 years. Even before that, for almost 10 years, I was leading a monastic life. And those some years of that monastic life, I was also serving as an engineer with the local government. And I have been practicing and teaching meditation since nearly 35 years. In 2002, a group of French people came to our monastery, what we call monasteries in India as ashram. Ashram means it's a place where you rest or it's an abode. So, uh, I will use that word, ashram. So, some were having some physical problems, some ailments, some chronic ailments. And usually, we give them, or we give them, um, or take them to Ayurvedic doctors. So, that was how I was um, associated with Marinella. We came to know that she had cancer. C'est un lieu de culte et je pense que ce sont des pierres volcaniques et au fait je pense que ce sont des cérémonies qui sont liées à, 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 à la lune. Je pense Mais c'est une que... construction. C est, c est je... Non, non, ça c'est certainement une construction. Regardez les pierres qui sont en dessous. Regardez les pierres. Attendez, on va les voir peut-être de là. Et je pense il y a une esplanade. Il y a une grande esplanade et je pense que un, ça doit être en tout cas un lieu de méditation formidable. Ça doit être un lieu de méditation absolument magique. Et oui, 
effectivement, c'est oui, c'est magnifique. Ouais. L'immensité, ça, ça donne une relation à la nature qui est absolument ample, ample. Ah, c'est une relation. C'est vrai que vous me changez du Val de Marne. <rire> Ça, c'est clair que entre, nous, entre nous, entre les néons de ville juif et, et ce bel arbre, hein, quand même, Ça, y a, on y, y a quand même quelques différences, c'est quand même quelques différences. Écoutez, je vous fais un aveu. Oui. Vous n'êtes sûrement pas la malade que j'ai suivie le plus longtemps, mais vous êtes celle qui m'a emmené le plus loin. What I would like to know is uh, when Nella came to, to see you, what did you do practically? Actually, we found Marella as a person who needs help. She had cancer. So, as I told you earlier, cancer has roots in the soul, in the mind, and also in the body. So, we, uh, I tried to convince her that she must change her outlook on life. He helped me to understand that I have a problem. Mm. And when I go to see you, <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I was sure that I have a disease. And when I speak with him, he says, forget the disease for a moment. What is the problem? And you cannot because yeah. For me, you were, <laughs> For you, you, it's disease, impossible. Where you had a disease. No, it's, it's possible. But my, my, I consider that my main role was to treat your disease. And so? At the end, and with you the have best done possible that. care. Yeah. No, I, I didn't do that. I, 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 I would try to modify her statement. But I tried, I tried mm. to, do, to do that. Uh, 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 and practically, mm. what are your, your main techniques or methodology to, to First, do this? Thing? We try to win the friendship. Yes, of that person. And confidence. Ah, confidence. And I can tell you that you succeeded because she is your main supporter. <laughs> because we don't have a methodology. We interact with the person and we change. And also, when I deal with the person, especially who is receptive like Marinella, I am not uh, trying to prove my faith on some system, on what her. Do, what do you call a person, a receptive person? No, because that is very difficult to define, receptivity. <laughs> because when we say something, they are uh, ready to admit it, or they understand she, it. With me, she was ready to admit nothing. She was the most unreceptive person. That <laughs> I would say you started in, in a wrong direction. Probably. <laughs> of this, you are probably because, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Many yeah, people yeah, think yeah. that I don't want to live or I am not fit to live. For whatever bad things happen to me, I deserve it. Yes, this is true. Oh. This is true. So I told, I, I, we try to tell them that they don't deserve anything unless they choose consciously. I know once the disease manifested, we should not uh, restrict our treatment to the soul only. We have to uh, address the problem in the mind and then later correct the problems in the body. So for that we need an adaptive system and also an adaptive person. An integrated system, an exactly. integrated system which is not the case in Western medicine. Exactly. Which everything is divided. So and, uh, I know that Ayurveda deals with, the per with persons, not with the diseases. So we took her to an Ayurvedic doctor. But treating the cancer in the body alone is not enough. No, this I understand. This yeah. I understand. But what you told me, which is for me very important, mm. you are, when you receive a cancer patient mm. who is previously receiving allotherapy or chemotherapy, you are not telling him, mm. stop it. Yeah, I will not. I will never say you that. You will never say that. Yeah. You will never say that. Mm. You will say, and then we'll see what happened. And also, when yeah. somebody comes to me who is taking um, uh, allopathic medicines, I would tell them to have some supplementary Ayurvedic medicines. Yes. Because Ayurvedic medicines correct, try to correct your body, correct, or to, to bring the balance of your physical energies. So, that can 
actually go along with allopathic medicine to reduce the damage, okay. to reduce the side effects. Mm -hmm. The spiritual cure we suggest and also the mental cure we offer and also the Ayurvedic medicines, all these are very slow in action. Yes. They don't manifest yes. quick results. Yes, exactly. So, so for, a, for a person to remain confident that long is difficult. So there allopathy comes to help because it gives uh, measurable results very soon. There are two types of sciences, I would say. Objective <laughs> wrong, science... Wrong in the, no, wrong no, no, in no, 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 no. Objective <laughs> science and the subjective science. Because the treatment of cancer should be from subjective science. That is, every patient, every system works differently. The same system works differently on different persons. But the objective science but is different because every, every system or medicine works on every patient the same way. You know, this is extremely interesting and this is what I want to do in the next years of mm. my life. Mm. Uh, I think that basic science, mm. very, very basic science, have shown, uh, we know as, a, uh, as, as, as human beings, as individuals, as philosophers, you know that any individual any, any, is different. Exactly. Is different and has to be considered as a unique person. But what we are learning from the deepest biology is that every tumor yeah. is also different. Yeah. Is also different. And probably the future is to treat all tumors individually. Okay. To be more practical, I will take you to the doctor whom, who, who treated Marinella. Mr. Thomas, the doctor from France. Thank you for me. Meet Mr. Vaidya, Gangadharan Vaidya, who cured Marinella. Yeah. It was my Indian doctor, my French, French doctor. doctor. It was a great medicine. <laughs> it was a great, great medicine, your medicine. Hello, my name is Marinella. So, doctor, Vaidya prescribed two medicines to Marinella. Which means? Mainly. One is a deco. Varanadi Kashaya. Varanadi 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 Kashaya. And it is... Chandra Prabha Pilsi Michi. And actually, Kashayam is a decoction. Is a decoction. A decoction with many herbs. And you will show me oh, how sure. it is done and how it sure. is. And Chandra Prabha, that's yeah. also a, 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 a tablet Tablets. made of many herbs. So, local, uh, local herbs? Oh, all, all of them available locally and, okay. and prepared in his factory. So you will show me. Yeah. Thank you very much for showing me that. Thank you. And for me, it was perfect. It was the right oh. medicine. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank <laughs> you. So, uh, so you may go with uh, Vaidya Nalla. So, Thomas, I will take you to, to that you. Ayurvedic manufacturing plant. This way, please. That herb, it acts on the blood and also it helps in removing the toxins. So kid kidney is a main agent of removing toxins from the blood. So that is why I told you that that herb is particularly indicated in preparing... It, it doesn't mean that you believe that this medicine has a specific action of on one organ. It's no, a general no, no, no. action. It, 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 these medicines or uh, particular herb will have specific action on some yes. specific process on in our body. But actually, even the same decoction 
um, for example, the, the same decoction, Varanadi Kashayam, can be taken with a, with a, um, with a potassium salt. Yes. Uh, and it, also it, it can be taken question. with honey. It can be taken with some ghee, that is clarified butter. So each, with each thing, the effect of the medicine is different. Yes. And, and all of these medicines are coming from plants. Some from plants, some from minerals and salts. Some from minerals and salts. Okay. Yes, you are also using that. Ah. And also some yes. minerals are um, put in, into fire and made into oxides. And now that uh, <coughs> you have next door this modern science, you, you are trying to to know which chemical product, which chemical compound is inside of all of his no, products? That, 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 will all, that will be... You, you, you already know? Uh, a little, but I know. But mm, going for the composition of a drug yes. is just like... Uh, to Excuse me for using a strong word, which mm -hmm. is just like understanding, uh, doing a post-mortem examination on a body. Necropsy. On, on, Necropsy. <laughs> on how, to, uh, how to understand a, a living organism is functioning yes. because a combination of a drug and uh, this thing how it acts on a on a on organism is yes. very different from the chemical chemical effect no, of this something this is true this is true and uh, so this is one special herb what do you do with that uh, we, we cut it and then put it in water and boil and um, and you, you have many 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 many, 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 many preparations in the yeah, yeah. and this is also a plant and this also, actually, and this these are common plants in co co Kerala. Common plants. Actually, I would say this is Saida cordifolia. Uh, this is very good in rheumatism and uh, dis disorders of the brain. And this also one yeah. tuber. Oh. This, is, this is what we call asparagus. It's, it's an asparagus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. may, I, may I break it? Oh, yeah, it's a tuber. And also, this is very good in cooling the body processes. Cooling generating some friendly energy or something like that. Yeah. This is being more practical. And you are also using what well, you have to recover here? For example, uh, rheumatism, then, uh, sciatica, sciatic neuritis. Is this you know? Onions. <laughs> no, no. Uh, garlic. Garlic. Yeah. Huh. This is, you know, Vitania somnifera. This ah, it's a very good to sleep. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, it is a, it's a brain stimulant. Brain stimulant? And also relaxant. Relaxant. Uh. This is for fever. Uh. For fever. And this one for red This one. is uh, for uh, bronchial disorders. Bronchial okay. disorders. Uh, like asthma and uh, asthma, other yeah. bronchial disorder, disorders. Fantastic. Doctor is bringing that tablet okay. which we prescribed for Marinella. For so Marinella? Yeah. Chandra Prabha mm. tablet. Chandra Prabha Gulliga. See, this one. Yes, this tablet. Yeah. See, so it's clear that it's, uh, it looks more sympathetic than chemotherapy. Yeah, very, very, <laughs> very friendly. You may taste one. No, no, just chew one. It does not you taste think so? very. Uh, it does not taste very awful. It's very hard. It's very hard. Uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, I will break my teeth. It's no, dangerous. Just leave it there in your mouth mm. for a few minutes. Then. Still very good. Not very good. I told you it is not less awful. Less <laughs> awful. Yes. This is the 
the the, the decoction yes. we prescribed for two, Nala. Two. So Nala. Yeah. So I want to to. Yeah. Maybe what, what I, I do? I give me give me the two decoctions uh, given to Nella, and I will try to to make it analyzed in okay, well, Paris. Okay. This one and, and this one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Di teri paket ada, di lincer tu. Okay. Ini adalah 100 tablet. 100 tablet. Anda ada tablet. So this are this the minimum. It's a problem for you to. No, no. Oh, thank you very much. I'll bring it down. Thank you very much. This is a very beautiful gift. Thank you very much. If you express the color of a flower in chemical terms, or the the pigments in the number of pixels, or the fragrance. <laughs> the chemical analysis of a fragrance, but the fragrance itself, the color, the combination, the contrast, everything, it cannot be expressed in logic. So allopathy is more logic, but Ayurveda and other systems, they are more like the way of feelings and the totality. For me, it's a very interesting and, and strange visit. It was not exactly what I expected. Uh, just briefly, first I was moved to see the place where Marinella has been treated and uh, to see the doctor who took her in care. But I think I learned more about what you told me on Ayurvedic medicine in general. Okay. They are devoted mainly to, to children with very chronic, severe neuropathic and encephalopathic disease, which I was not expected. And this is very specific. And maybe one thing that I would like to discuss in more details with you is that I understand that Ayurvedic is much more to, to take care of what I would call chronic disease than for acute conditions. That is one way of looking at it. But when something is acute and when some, when some emergency invasion is needed, yes. allopathy is better. But where allopathy is almost helpless, Ayurveda exactly. can do a lot. And what I admire is the, the fact that you are taking chronic disease with much more courage and much more uh, long vision than what we are doing. Because yeah. our results are very poor. Yeah. But because more or less we are not taking care of these patients. Because we are sending them in places where we have no money, no, 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 and they are staying there for the rest of their life in very sad conditions. Yeah. Director Mr. Krishna Kumar. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Welcome. 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 This is uh, Marinella. Uh, Krishna Kumar. Professor Thomas. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Professor Thomas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for welcoming thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to visit this institution. Okay. And I see that you are a, a, a man of tradition, of culture, but also a man of progress and opening. Thank you very much. Thank you for welcoming me here. How old is this institution? This institution, Ayurveda Pharmacy, the main company was started in 1943. 1943. And then uh, the hospital during that activity was mainly production of uh, quality traditional Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, hospital was started in 1950. It started in a small way. It was in an outside campus in a rented building, but shifted to this campus in 1977. In the So it's a uh, 3.5 acres of land. We have 120 bed capacity. In Dulal, 
would, would you tell me what are the global principles of Ayurvedic medicine? And maybe you, you, the specific things that you are doing here during these treatments? Okay. First, I will tell about the basic principles of uh, Ayurveda. Uh, it's the concept about the body and its functioning is con totally different from the way the conventional medical system has looked up on. See, we, in fact, uh, uh, consider body as post structure as well as function in that way. And the importance is given mostly for the functional aspect of the body, which we call as Tridoshas or uh, three functional principles of the body. The first uh, and the foremost, most important dosha or the functional principle in the body is Vata. In, that's in the Sanskrit terminology. So it, it's a principle of movement, perhaps the only mobile thing in the body which makes other things also move. The second is Pitta, which is the principle of transformation. So any changes happening to the body, whether it is starting from the basic digestion to the, all the metabolic uh, transformation happening in the body, is brought under the heading Pitta. Third is Kapha, or the principle of cohesion, which binds together all the things and keeps everything in the shape, cohesion, structure, cohesion cohesion, 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 cohesion. So these three principles, Vada, Pitta and Kapha, are to be in a state of balance when we are it's the, the, the Greek letter? So no, it's the, a Sanskrit letter. Sanskrit, Sanskrit, Sanskrit yeah. Yeah. Vada, Pitta, Kapha. <laughs> so these are uh, basically the functional principles which are to be in a state of balance when we are healthy. And when there is an imbalance, there is disease. So the, whether it is treatment or diet restrictions or lifestyle modification are, are all meant to bring these three things back to balance. Back to balance. Yes. So this is, this, this is in fact based on a, a, a concept that uh, uh, we are nothing but a miniature form of this universe. So whatever you see in the universe, you see within the body. And whatever is there within the body, in fact, in a subtle form is there all over the universe. Skin disease. So this is this is for skin disease. Herbal decoction. Is for what? For uh, musculoskeletal and neurological problems. This is again the deity of uh, Lord Dhanvantari. Medicine. Medicine. Lord of medicine. Symptoms, the histories, the examination, then we have the observation. Radiology, radiology. This is incredibly important because it's the question I had when arriving in India. The fact that just to accept to, to have a, the compounds known, validated, certified, and it and means then, that you will repeat that in 2012, 20, 20, 20, you will repeat it again. We have to repeat. J'avais envie que vous veniez ici pour une raison très précise, c'est qu'aujourd'hui en Inde, c'est le lieu le plus en pointe de l'Ayurveda. Et j'avais envie que vous rencontriez ces médecins. Je pense qu'il y a des échanges qui peuvent se faire d'égal à égal. Oui. Et je voudrais crois... juste que vous me disiez ce que vous pensez de l'Indoulal. Alors d'abord, l'Indoulal, avez... je l'ai trouvé très bien. Mais ceci dit, je l'ai trouvé très bien les autres personnes que j'ai rencontrées avant. Mais je pense que la, la grande différence, c'est que ceux que j'ai rencontrés au Kerala, et en particulier notre ami Rito Digala, euh, j'ai eu avec lui des conversations extrêmement élevées au plan, je dirais, philosophique, spirituel, euh, humain, moral. Avec Idulal, j'ai eu, pour la première fois, une conversation médicale. Et ça, c'est la première chose qui m'a frappé. La deuxième façon, c'est donc... L'hôpital est, est organisé, ça ressemble à un hôpital. Ça ressemble à un hôpital avec des consultations, avec des, un enregistrement. Euh, ici, ils sont quand même dans une notion évolutive de la médecine. 
Ils ont implanté des choses qui n'existaient pas il y a 5 ans, ils ont implanté des choses qui n'expliquaient pas il y a 10 ans. Ils essayent de comprendre ce qu'ils font. Et sur les produits ici, à l'intérieur du cœur, là, il y a écrit ce qu'il y a dans chacune des bouteilles. Ils ont fait l'analyse. Vous voilà rassuré. Ont... Mais non, c'est pas du voilà tout. Vous voilà rassuré, il y a une étiquette. Non, mais je non, peux sourire un peu, Thomas. Je sais que c'est sérieux, la médecine. Mais, mais c'est quand même fantastique. Mais ça ne me rassure en rien. Ça ne me rassure en rien. Il y a une étiquette. C'est la même chose, fondamentalement. Si moi, j'ouvre la bouche et je mets ce truc dans la bouche, c'est exactement la même chose, avec ou sans non. étiquette. L'étiquette, je m'en fous complètement de l'étiquette. Moi aussi, tant que je ne sais pas la lire, tant qu'il y a 10 000 choses dedans, et euh, ce n'est pas vrai que je suis rassuré par l'étiquette. En général, je n'ai jamais... Par contre, l'étiquette me semble être le symbole du fait qu'ils veulent comprendre ce qu'il y a dans leurs produits, et qui veulent arriver à des produits plus efficaces et qui veulent comprendre comment ça marche. La barrière, la barrière, elle n'est pas dans l'étiquette ou pas dans l'étiquette, elle est dans le fait qu'ils ne nomment pas les maladies, mmh. dans le fait que moi, dans ma façon de penser, j'ai besoin, enfin, le, le paradigme, c'est une cause, une maladie, un traitement. Et eux mmh. ne raisonnent pas du tout comme ça. Mmh. Et, et à la limite, quelle que soit la maladie, ils parlent d'ensemble, d'équilibre, de, de, ouais. euh, ils, ils ne cherchent pas à nommer les maladies, ils ne cherchent pas à comprendre les maladies, ils ne cherchent pas à soigner la maladie, ils mm -hmm. cherchent à soigner les... les et là, il y, euh, y, a, y a un hiatus, y a, y a, y a, on ne parle pas exactement de la même chose, et je ne sais pas qui a tort, qui a raison, mais on sait comme ça. Ce n'est pas que ça me rassure ou que ça ne me rassure pas, là, on ne parle pas de la même chose. We understand this is, as in fact, a, an entity which is in, caused by a derangement of certain functional and structural aspects of the body. So the purpose of the treatment is to bring back the balance by either uh, eliminating the toxic uh, factors from the body or by or just by simply pacifying the deranged factors. Doshas are the functional principles of the body which governs all the activities in the body. So any physiological functions can be broadly classified under all these three headings. What in Sanskrit we call it as Vada, Pitta and Kapha. What we actually do is uh, different types of massage. What is more popular and more uh, effectively practiced is oil massage. In Sanskrit it is known as Abhyanga which is nothing but application of medicated oil on the head, face, and all over the body. So there we need to understand a little bit of the treatment principles of Ayurveda. It's always the opposites. When there is a disease is caused by dryness, or when there is an aggravation of dryness in the body, you give the opposite of dryness. It is a lubricating, oily thing. So when there is increase of cold properties in the body, you treat with hot thing. So that there is a balance. So this is the basic Ayurvedic principle of treatment. So that's why a traditional Ayurvedic company manufactures around 150 varieties of oil. Ayurveda considers, very interesting thing is that as a body is compared to an inverted tree with its root on top and branches and trunk down. So any treatment is just like watering or irrigating the roots of a plant. So though it is only done to the head, its effect is supposed to reach the most distal part of the body. Another treatment is Shirovasti. Shiro again means head, shiras, etc. Vasti means uh, re something to uh, retain whatever medicated fluid we are going to. Shirovasti is effective in uh, diseases of various ear, nose, throat diseases, uh, degenerative uh, problems of the spine, neck, uh, migraine, and uh, other neurological problems. This combination of, uh, say, Abhyanga, Dara, Pritchal, Navarakiri is also done in many, many uh, recuperative phase of uh, various illnesses, including certain type of uh, cancer, we can say.
I'm really convinced that there is a science here, yes. that there is a knowledge, that there is a tradition. It's no doubt that uh, it can have some efficacy in a number of disease. Uh, I'm convinced uh, by intuition, but not by evidence-based. Uh, so, uh, and I have seen striking things which uh, I can't explain with my, with my current knowledge. So I have to think about and to understand better. It doesn't mean that I am converted to I'm not becoming an Hindu or an Ayurvedic doctor. I still have my belief and I still believe in my science. But I'm convinced that something is happening here. Maybe our doctors have not the same internal qualities than yours. <laughs> but I would in fact teach us to be questioning in nature. Yes. You are not and, uh, allowed to take anything for granted. And a number like of uh, Western doctors are arrogant persons you know, thinking that they have science and, uh, and knowledge. And we should change that. Very good. Qu'est-ce qui se passe Je fais 15 000 km pour faire quoi 30 cm. Je passe de là à là. Qu'est-ce qu'ils m'ont appris ici Ils m'ont appris que j'étais pas ce que je pensais être socialement, que j'étais pas mon corps, que j'étais pas euh, tout, toutes les pensées, tout le bordel, on peut dire ça, qui était dans ma tête, que j'étais bien autre chose. Donc à la, à la fois, tu comprends, quand j'essaye je, de t'expliquer, que je peux remercier cette maladie. Ce qui te, ce qui, je comprends. Ce qui me mais je comprends que ça te choque et que ça te mette en rogne. Je pense que cette maladie est une malédiction. Non, non, mais je comprends que ça te choque et ça te mette en rogne. Mais si moi je refais le parcours. C'est ton parcours à toi. Il ne faut pas que tu deviennes un modèle. Mais attends, mais, je, mais attends. <rire> J'ai absolument pas l'intention de le devenir. Voilà, c'est ça, c'est la seule chose que non, je voudrais qu'il soit clair entre nous. Mais non, mais j'ai tu es, Je suis très heureux de ce qui t'est arrivé. Je suis très heureux qu'on se retrouve là. Je pense que tu n'es pas absolument le modèle idéal à suivre. Mais bon, ah non, mais chacun attends, a son mais... opinion. Non, non, moi simplement, ce que je, ce que je pense, c'est que ce qui est fondamental, c'est que chacun décide de sa vie. Ce qui m'a le plus étonné, c'est les gens. C'est les gens et la qualité des gens que j'ai rencontrés, la qualité humaine des gens que j'ai rencontrés. J'ai rencontré en quelques jours, alors que tu me les avais sélectionnés, dans des personnes formidables, avec qui, effectivement, dont j'aimerais avoir euh, certains dans mon institut. J'ai vu des gens qui avaient une culture, une profondeur, qui avaient réfléchi, euh, et, et ça, ça m'a ému, touché. Euh, j'ai eu des discussions euh, d'un un niveau euh, extrêmement élevé, peut-être de, de, de gens euh, qui utilisent le mot admirable. J'ai admiré un certain nombre de personnes que j'ai rencontrées. J'ai vu des malades heureux. J'ai vu des malades qui avaient envie de revenir. C'est rare de voir ça dans les hôpitaux français. Quand tu es dans un hôpital, tu as envie de te tirer et tu n'as pas envie de dire je vais réserver ma chambre pour l'année prochaine. Alors j'en fais pas le même métier, la même maladie, etc. Il euh, y a des différences. Mais j'ai été frappé par le fait que des malades soignés aux États-Unis ou des malades soignés en Angleterre, certes d'origine indienne, mais quand même, disent euh, pour mon cancer, je suis suivi là-bas, mais pour me remettre et être pris en charge humainement, moralement et pour récupérer, c'est beaucoup mieux ici. Bon, c'est quelque chose que j'entends et que je reçois, que je comprends et, et dont j'essaierai de m'inspirer. So we have a common enemy, which is death. I have to contract it. It's in a Please. That death is not an enemy. But cancer is an enemy. Cancer is an enemy. So <laughs> this is uh, clearly... From the moment a person knows that mm, he's stricken with cancer, he's, mm, he's always thinking about when he will die. Mm. So this should be changed. It brings the daily idea of your own death. Exactly. In your daily life, yeah. which is something unbearable for, for most of us. Philosophically, remembering your death is very good. Because then you will do only good things to yourself and also to others. But here, you are creating a kind of panic, an emergency situation. 
It's true. It's, I think it's true in the West as well. Yeah, everywhere. In which the family situation, the social situation, yeah. professional situation destroyed. And it changed the way the other ones are looking at you. And it changed the way you are looking to the other one. And it, cha it changed your, your, your vision of life, even if the treatment is successful, okay. even if you live long your vision of the rest of the is changed, is modified. So do you think that if we change the definition of care we give the, the patient, even uh, uh, what is your opinion that, um, you know, recently um, people with psychiatric problems, they were referred to as patients, but now, now, nowadays psychologists are referring to them as clients. If <laughs> it's true, yes. Everybody is spiritual because spirit is in everybody. That is my faith, that is my knowledge. So everybody is spiritual. But organized religion and organized systems of expressing spirituality, they, they may be lacking it. So deep inside, everybody knows that they are something more than their body and mind. Because their mind is changing, their attitude is changing. But still the person is saying, I, the sense of I, which is, <laughs> that does not change. So there is something more in every individual. That is spirit or the soul. And whether they express it, or whether they feel it, or whether they are using their body and mind to enrich what is going on deep inside, that is different. So everybody is spiritual. I found Dr. Thomas an open person. The very fact that he came to India to explore something new, that itself is a good beginning. 